In this video, I'm gonna show you how to download and install Kane Enable on a Windows 10 computer. I wouldn't recommend that you run Kane Enable on your primary Windows computer. Rather, install it on a virtual machine or on a alternate a laptop or computer that you don't care too much about. The reason why is that Windows 10 will see Kane Enable as malicious software and will try and remove it from your computer. So one of the first things you need to do is disable antivirus on your Windows 10 computer before you try and install Kane Enable because otherwise Windows will simply remove it because it sees it once again as malicious software. So in this video, I'm gonna show you all the steps. I'm gonna show you how to download Kane Enable, how to install it on a Windows 10 computer, and then I'll show you how to start it up and sniff your networks Basically, start doing basic hacking using Kane Enable. In other videos in this series, I've shown you how to intercept HTTP sessions, I've shown you how to poison ARP caches, I've shown you how to poison DNS caches, and a whole bunch of other things. Okay, let's get started, and I'll show you how to install Kane Enable on a Windows 10 computer. Okay, so the first thing you need to do in Windows is disable your antivirus. So. I'm gonna search for virus and go to virus and threat protection. Kane will be picked up as a virus. So you want to disable all your antivirus settings. So make sure that you turn off real time protection. Make sure that you turn off cloud delivered protection. Turn off automatic sample submission. So again, you simply wanna disable all antivirus, all malware protection, etc., on your Windows computer because Kane will most likely be picked up as a virus or malicious software. Okay, so once you've disabled antivirus, open up a web browser and go to the following URL, webarchive.org. Now, Kane Enable's website has been shut down for a while. This software is really old, been around for many, many years, but you can no longer download the software from the Kane Enable website. So the Kane Enable website no longer is available, but you can get the software from the Wayback Machine. I've put this link below this video so that you can download the software easily. This is one of the best links that I found from the Wayback Machine. So what we're gonna download is Kane Enable version 4.9 for Windows NT 2000 and XP. You can see the software is downloading. It's called ca underscore setup.exe. Now again, if you don't have your antivirus disabled, it won't allow you to download the software. I've also had problems using Microsoft browsers to download the software, so I'm using Chrome to download Kane. Okay, so the software is downloaded. I'll look at it in folder. It's only about eight meg in size, but what I'm gonna do is make a copy of the software in case the antivirus complains. Now, before you can run Kane Enable, you need to download WinPCAP. So don't run this installation until you've downloaded WinPCAP. Again, I've put the link to this website below this video. So I'm gonna download version 4.1.3 installer for Windows. It's only a small piece of software. So once again, open that in folder and I'll double click on WinPCAP 413. So again, what I'm doing is installing WinPCAP first and then I'll install Kane Enable. So I'll click next, click I agree, click install and click finish. Simple installation. And now I'm gonna double click on the Kane executable. As you can see here, Microsoft Defender has prevented this application from running. I'm gonna click more info and I'm gonna click run anyway. Say yes to install the software. Installation is very simple. You're basically just gonna click next, but you're not gonna install WinPCAP because you've already installed that. So click next, 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 next. Installation completes, click finish. I'm not gonna install WinPCAP because I've already installed that. So click don't install. Okay, but don't start Kane Enable yet. You need to make some changes in control panel. So in control panel, Go to network and internet, network and sharing center, change adapter settings, and on your network adapter, the network adapter that you're gonna use. So in this example, I've got two network adapters, so I'll disable the one. And on this network adapter, the one I'm gonna use, I'm gonna double click on it, go to properties. 
I'm going to disable IP version six. So disable IP version six. And then go to your IP version four settings, click properties, go to advanced, go to DNS, and make sure that both of these settings are checked. Click okay, click okay again, and close those settings. So once again, on any network adapters that you're going to be using, make sure that you've disabled IP version six. Make sure that under your TCP IP settings, under advanced DNS, you've checked both these boxes and click OK. Once you've done that, open PowerShell. Run that as an administrator and use this command, net sh int IP set global task load disable and press enter. I've once again put that command below this video so that you can just copy it and use it. Okay, so hopefully at this point, we'll be able to run Kane enable. So in Windows, I'm gonna search for Kane and I'm gonna run it. And there you go, Kane enable has started up. Now you may have problems, once again, with your antivirus. You may have to disable your antivirus. I've sometimes found that when I reboot Windows, the antivirus kicks in again, removes Kane, and then I just need to install it once again. So just run the installation process. I've done all the prerequisite stuff like disabling IP version six, setting up DNS properly. I've got WinPCAP enabled. So all those settings are in place already. So I can simply run the Kane installation process again if needed. Okay, so in Kane, I'm gonna go to configure. You can set the sniffer to start on startup and set up poisoning on startup if you want to. Now at the moment, the adapter that it's picked up is this adapter without an IP address. And that may be because I disabled the network adapter after I installed Kane. So what I'm gonna do is exit Kane, and I'm going to enable this network adapter. In this case, it doesn't matter. I've got two network adapters within this virtual machine connecting to the same network. You shouldn't have that problem because you may only have your wireless network adapter on your computer as an example. Go to configure and notice it's picked up the second network adapter here and an IP address has been allocated to that network adapter. So that's the network adapter that I actually wanna use. I'm gonna set mine to start the sniffer on startup. You don't have to do that. You can manually start the sniffer by clicking here. And in my example, because I'm using a virtual machine and Kane wants to sniff all traffic, I have to give the virtual machine permissions to do that. So if you were running this on a physical computer, you wouldn't have that problem. If you're running it within a virtual machine like I am, you're gonna to need to give that virtual machine permission to capture all traffic on the network. In this case, because I'm using a physical ethernet connection, it's running in promiscuous mode. You may wanna disable promiscuous mode if you're using a wireless connection. You could have problems using promiscuous on a wireless connection. So you may find that it works better with just a physical ethernet connection. If you wanna capture stuff on wireless, you may need to implement an op poisoning attack so that you actually see people's traffic on your network. And I've shown you how to do that in this video. Okay, so it's already picked up some devices on my network, but what I can do is scan for devices on the network. So I need to enable my sniffer here. Right click, scan for MAC addresses. I'll scan for devices in my local subnet and notice it's picked up a whole bunch of devices in my network, including this device, which I know is that Windows laptop over there. That Windows laptop is only connected to the wireless network. But under routing as an example, I can already see that there is a EIGRP router in my network. This is a Cisco router, and I've also got an OSPF router. It's already picked up the password that that OSPF router is using. Routing protocols are used by routers to exchange routes with one another. Don't worry about that if you don't know what routing is. Basically, Kane is already picking up passwords on the network. And as an example, if I telnet from my Mac to a Cisco device in the network, and I'll just log in as Peter with a password and type show version and exit from that router. What you'll notice is Kane has already picked up that session. And if I click view, I can see 
the username and the password that I used to log into this Cisco switch. And I can see all the output from that session. So Kane has a lot of functionality. I'll show you some of the other features in other videos. In this video, I simply wanted to show you how to get Kane Enable installed on a Windows computer. Once again, I would recommend that you use this within a virtual machine or an older laptop that you've got lying around. Don't run this on your primary computer because you're going to need to disable antivirus. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please like it. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and please click on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bumble. Want to wish you all the very best.